everyone, and welcome to Church Online. My name is Jake. I'm the online pastor here, and I want to welcome you to The Bridge, our online service, and it is going to be a great Sunday. We're expecting God to do incredible things. It is Pentecost Sunday, and we believe God is going to move like never before because we believe the Holy Spirit is alive and active today, and we believe that God can meet you right where you are. God is omnipresent. That means he's here in the building, he's there with you at home, and he can do things at your your house and he is willing to meet you right where you are and we believe that God is going to do great incredible things because we're speaking on the Holy Spirit today and we know that it's going to be great we have an online host right now who's ready to speak with you and talk to you and hang out with you so engage with us in the chat whatever you need if you have any questions about who we are as the bridge go ahead and ask those questions her name is Keisha from right now to the end of this service if you need anything at all let us know and we are so excited that you are here today from right now to the end of service, again, you'll see these links inside of the chat. Take advantage of those. If you're new here, go to connectcard.wearethebridge.church, fill that out, and we will get you connected here at the bridge. And most importantly, we are here to pray with you. Just because you're not here in the building does not mean you cannot receive prayer. So go to prayer.wearethebridge.church, fill out that form, and I will pray with you. I will contact you and pray with you or Go to our online host and ask for prayer, and we will start a separate chat with you outside of the public chat so we can pray with you because we believe this is a church online. We believe that we can, God can move and meet you right where you are and lives can be changed. And if you can, if you can share this experience today, if you can just spread the gospel just by hitting that share button or copying this link and send it to a friend, who knows, God can move and reach a life today just because you hit that share button. And if you can, I said prayer, we're all about prayer here on Church Online. If you can, pray with us. We have our students going to youth camp this week and we could use your prayer. I personally was called into ministry at youth camp and I know the power that can happen at youth camp. So can you pray for all of our students? We're taking... With our leaders, we're taking over 200 people, and that is incredible. We know that lives will be changed, and God will move at youth camp. So thank you so much for joining us for Church Online. Again, reach out to our church, uh, our online host, and we will get you connected, answer any questions that you have, and prepare for an incredible message from Pastor Rob today. It's Pentecost Sunday, and we're going to be getting started here in two minutes and 20 seconds, so hang tight. Thanks, guys.
praise Him for the wonders of His love. Oh, let's sing out. Come on, praise God. Praise God. My 
Worship him this morning. Let's exalt him today. You're the same God. We need you now. Oh, we need you now. How we need you now. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm calling on the Holy Spirit. Mighty river, come and fill me again. Come and fill me again. Come and fill me. Come and fill me again. Oh, come on, let's reach out for him this morning. Let's reach out for him this morning. More of you, Jesus.
I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. In your presence.
Amen. Let's respond to the word of the Lord. Let's seek him. Father, we do. We seek you. Lord, you are the answer, God. You're our hope. You're our dreams, Lord. Everything we, we need is in you. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. We seek you, Lord, today. We need you, Jesus. Come on, just seek his heart, not his hand. Amen. Let's run after him. Lord, we need you today, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Lord. You have your way, God. We magnify your name. Bless you, Lord. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. God, we bless your name. We bless your name. Jesus, we need you. We seek you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if we're not careful, we can make this out to be a whole lot of other things other than just a relationship with Jesus, and that's what it's all about. When we come to church, it's great to see your friends. It's great to hang out and do things, but if we don't have an encounter with God, it's just another meeting, amen? And it's, it's all about him, about going after him and running after him. He has seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then what happens? Everything else falls into place. Amen? That's what it's about. One more time, just love him for a minute, would you? God, we do. We love you. We bless you. We honor you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glorify your name, God. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated. Figure we ought to just let the Holy Spirit do what he wants on the day of Pentecost, amen? <laughs> Today is the uh, Feast of uh, Pentecost. If you know anything about the Jewish folks, they had three feasts that happened in the spring, Passover and Unleavened Bread and First Fruits. Three that happened in the fall, Feast of Trumpets and Day of Atonement and Feast of Ingathering. And then right in the middle, 50 days after, which is what Pentecost means, after the uh, Passover, when Jesus was uh, crucified, or all the way back to the Old Testament, when the Passover lamb was slaughtered, was the day of Pentecost. What Pentecost was, was a, a time that Israel celebrated that they had left the land of Egypt, they had made it to Mount Sinai, and God gave them the law. And so it was kind of the, the beginning of the covenant God made with Israel in the Old Testament there at Mount Sinai, and that's what it signified. And so for all those years, they had those festivals. If you know anything about the seven Jewish feasts, they're all pointing to something in the future that's gonna fulfill them. And those first three were fulfilled by Jesus 
when he was our Passover lamb, was our unleavened bread that was buried, and was the feast of first fruits when he was the firstborn to rise from the dead, and the first fruits of the dead, and um, he fulfilled those festivals. And then after Jesus was on this earth, 50 days later, on the day of Pentecost, you read about it in Acts chapter two. They were all in the upper room praying, and all of a sudden a sound came from heaven, sounded like a mighty rushing wind, tongues of fire came down, landed on their heads. They all began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance, and from that day on, the church was born, amen? And I believe it was, the, 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 what that feast pointed to is not only it was a reminder of the old covenant God made with Israel, but that was the day of the new covenant with Israel. That from that point on, we were now living under a covenant of grace with God, amen? The New Testament, Jesus had died, and now the new covenant was in effect, and that was the birth of the church. And so we celebrate that today, that we are living under a new covenant with the Lord and the Holy Spirit is doing his work with us. And so today I wanna to talk to you about being better together. How many of you know there's some things that just go better together, right? My wife and I have been so blessed in ministry to serve under great leaders that we had in our lives. Our first uh, pastor's brother and sister, Pavado, poured into us and they let us be dumb young youth pastors that did stupid things and, and helped us not to <laughs> give up or quit or get out of the ministry. And they were great to us. And in Arkansas, we served under Don and Carol Hutchings. They were a church that went from about um, 150 people to 800 people in five years, all new converts, people that didn't know any better. They'd dance in the aisles, they'd do whatever. You know, they were just, it was a fun church that was all about outreach and evangelism. And then we came here 28 years ago and worked on their brother and sister McNabb. And they just poured into us and so many, uh, and too many things. I catch myself doing stuff all the time and I think, wow, WWJD, what would Jim do? And I just doing things that, that I've seen him do um, over our lives. And so we've been so blessed and I'm blessed with a great church staff here that we have at our church. You heard Riley preach last week. All of them are great preachers. They're great pa uh, pastors. They, I respect their walk with God. I appreciate the way they treat their family and uh, they're talented and I love being on on a good team, amen? Don't you like being on a good team? And I, like I said, there's things that just go better together. I, I'm not a big dessert person, but if you're gonna give me a piece of cake, you better give me some coffee to go with it to wash it down, amen? Because just dessert and coffee go to better together, right? I don't really love cake, but if you put a big old chunk of vanilla ice cream on it and mix it all up, you know, I can do it, all right? Because they go better. Cake and ice cream go better together, um, I love peanut butter on just about anything. I'll put peanut butter on pancakes. If you're gonna give me a pancake and there's no peanut butter, just forget it, all right? You gotta have some peanut butter on there because it goes better together and peanut butter and jelly go better together. As Forrest Gump said, peas and carrots. They go good together, all right? And even though they're both nasty. But, um, but I believe that you and me and the Holy Spirit all go better together. And that is on the day of Pentecost, we celebrate the Holy Spirit and his work on this earth. And I, I want you to know that we're better off because of the Holy Spirit. John 14, 12, Jesus said, truth is, I say to you, anyone who believes in me and the same works that I do, you're gonna do greater works. Time out, wait a minute. Greater works than what Jesus did? He says, yes, because I'm going to the Father. Why was it significant that he was going to the Father? Because in John 16, seven, it says, it's to your advantage that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the helper can't come. But if I go away, I'm sending the Holy Spirit to help you. And so the Holy Spirit has come to help us to be able to do greater works than Jesus did. And we get to partner with the Holy Spirit. You know, in the Old Testament, or in the uh, back in the Bible times, you had Jesus running around doing his work, doing miracles through the power of the Holy Spirit. But today, that same Holy Spirit lives inside of you and me, and all of us now represent Jesus on this earth. And we go out and we should be able to do the same things that Jesus did because we have the same Holy Spirit helping us to do that. We're better together. And we get to partner with the Holy Spirit. I just think that's the coolest part of it all. We get to be on his team. You know, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come on people just for brief moments to empower them to do different things. There was a guy named Bezalel and a guy named Hur that God said the Holy Spirit came on them. He anointed them to be able to know how to build the items for the temple and how to put the temple together and, and to do all the gold inlay and all those things. God anointed them to do that job. Um, in the Old Testament, we see Samson that when the Holy 
Holy Spirit came on Samson at moments, that he was stronger than he ever would have been as a normal guy. You know, I think Samson was a little skinny old dude because there's no way that you would ask a big muscle man, you know, why are you so strong? He, it was obvious. He was just this little skinny dude or something. And the Holy Spirit would come on and he was stronger than he ever would have been. Gideon was a scaredy cat hiding in a hole because he was afraid of the Midianites trying to get some food ready. And yet the Holy Spirit came on him and he became a great leader and he was braver than he ever would have been. And that's the role the Holy Spirit comes and empowers us to do things we couldn't do in ourselves, and he makes us better when we're together with him. And see, before the day of Pentecost, a lot of times when the Holy Spirit came on people, they would prophesy. You see it all over the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit moved on them, and they began to prophesy. Um, even in the New Testament, before the day of Pentecost, when Mary went to see Elizabeth, and she was pregnant with John the baptizer, she walks in and says, hey, Elizabeth, and all of a sudden, the baby is filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth's filled with the Holy Spirit, and she begins to prophesy. Then a few days later, when John's born, and they write down his name as John, his dad, Zacharias, because he didn't believe the angel, couldn't talk. But then the Bible says when he wrote his name as John, he got filled with the Holy Spirit, and he began to prophesy. There was this time and time again in the Old Testament, a miraculous um, a speech or a miraculous verbal expression of the Holy Spirit moving on people. And on the day of Pentecost, we see the same thing. When they were all baptized in the Holy Spirit miraculously, they began to speak in languages they did not know and it was the baptism in the Holy Spirit that the Lord was moving in a new way on this earth. Jesus came and gave us an example of what it's like to be a human being on this earth that is led, helped, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Acts 10, 38 says God anointed Jesus with what? The Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. And so he did all those things through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus overcame his human limitations. He rose above his human weakness, rose above human mortality through the help of the Holy Spirit. And if Jesus needed the Holy Ghost, look at your neighbor and say, you do too, all right? We all do. At Jesus' baptism, he was baptized in water and the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove came and landed on him and Jesus was at that point, I believe, empowered by the Holy Spirit. The Bible said he left there full of the Holy Spirit, went out in the wilderness and he overcame all the temptation of the devil. He leaves there, he comes back home to his hometown, goes to church, opens the book of Isaiah and reads from Isaiah 61.1, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the good news to the afflicted, he sent me to bind up the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and freedom to the prisoners. And the rest of his ministry, he was going out using, working through the power of the Holy Spirit. When he cast out demons, they said they did it by the power of the devil. And he said, no, I didn't. I did it by the power of God, by the Spirit of God working through me. He was led by the Spirit time and time again to, to, to Samaria, to a woman at the well, to the pool of Bethesda, to a lame man, to, to the city of Nain where there was a funeral procession for a widow's only son and he pulls him out of that casket. Time and time again, Jesus being led by the Holy Spirit. It's no wonder the Bible says in John 3, 34 that Jesus was given the Spirit beyond measure. What that means is he was not limited to a portion of the Spirit. He had the fullness of the Holy Spirit. You know why? Because Jesus got out of the way and let the Holy Spirit do the work through him. And he's an example to us, is he not? And if you want to know what it's like to be like Jesus, you and I need to get rid of us and let there be more of Jesus and let him flow through us. Listen to him. Follow his leading. Let him empower us and make us better than we are in ourselves. See, Jesus promised that one day the Holy Spirit would be poured out on us. And when he, and back, all the way back to the Old Testament, Ezekiel 36 says, I'll give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit within you. I'm going to replace your heart of stone with a heart of, of the Spirit. And he says, um, he's going to put my spirit within you and you'll walk in my commandments. And so when, when Jesus rose from the dead, the first time he saw the disciples, John 20, 21, he breathed on them. And what did he say? He said, receive the Holy Spirit. I believe in that moment, they were saved just like you and I, and the Holy Spirit came and lived inside of them. And listen, we're an Assembly of God church. We believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But listen, if you tell people they don't have the Holy Spirit because they don't speak in tongues, you're wrong. The Bible's very clear that the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of us when we get saved. And people say we teach that, and we don't teach that, okay? 
But there is a second endowment of power from the Holy Spirit, and there's a third, a fourth, a fifth. There is more of the Holy Spirit to be poured out on our lives. The Holy Spirit comes and lives on us, or in us, at salvation, but he also comes on us and empowers us for service. He said in Acts 1.8, you'll receive power. When? When the Holy Spirit comes on you. Jesus told us in Luke 24, 49, do not leave Jerusalem until you've been clothed. You put clothing on the outside with power so that you can be my witnesses. And all the way back to the book of Joel, he said the same thing. Joel said, in those last days, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will dream dreams. Your old men will have visions. God was gonna pour his spirit out on us. And so there is more. And so since the day of Pentecost, there's been a more general, permanent endowment of the Holy Spirit that's available to you and me. And I just want to challenge us today. We need more. We need more because we get to partner with him in ministry. We're on the same team as the Holy Ghost. Think about that. That's pretty cool. When I was a boy growing up, we, had, we didn't have Optimus Club. We had Boys Club and Girls Club. And I remember on my flag football team, we had a kid named Mitch Nash. His dad was a pastor at a church in our town, and Mitch was fast. And all I had to do was take the football, hand it to Mitch, and he would run for a touchdown, and we won the city championship. I was glad Mitch was on our team. Like in sixth grade, we had a kid on our team that was like six foot 11, or I don't know, he's tall, because we just threw him the basketball, and he'd dunk it, and we won. And we were a good team, but it was because of him. It reminds me of the night Michael Jordan scored 69 points against the Cleveland Cavaliers. And after the game, they were all bragging on him. And, and there was a young man there named Stacy King, a rookie from University of Oklahoma. And that night, he scored two points. And everybody in the locker room was talking to Michael Jordan. And Stacy King was over on the other side of the locker room by himself. And a reporter walked over to him and said, Stacy, how's it feel to know in your rookie year you scored two points on the night Michael Jordan scored 69? He said, I'll remember this night for the rest of my life is the night Michael Jordan and I teamed up and scored 71 points together. Amen. I tell you, the Holy Spirit's better than Michael Jordan. And he's on your team. You're on his team. And so we get to partner with him together in ministry, and we are better together because of that. And so this morning, I want to give you about four ways that we get to partner how the Holy Spirit helps us in this thing. And first of all, the Holy Spirit helps us with education. He gives us insight into the things of God. When we get saved, the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of us, and he, he draws us to him through conviction. You remember what it was like that time you got saved, when you were just waiting for the preacher to shut up so you could go to the altar, your friend to quit talking? so you could get saved because the Holy Spirit's just got butterflies and there's conviction in your heart. And you're like, man, I know I need to do this and tonight's the night, you know? That's the Holy Spirit working on us. The Holy Spirit convicts us. The devil condemns us. He just tells you you're no good. The Holy Spirit says, no, there's a better way. And he draws us to God. And if you're convicted, that's a good thing. It's the Holy Spirit drawing you to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 says, nobody knows the thoughts inside of a man except the spirit that's inside of that man. And you and I, guess what? We haven't received the spirit of this world. We've received the spirit that comes from God. And so we can know the thoughts of God. Why? Because we have God's spirit inside of us. I don't know what Brother McGee's thinking. I don't know how to tell what you know, he wants for dinner. But, but if I had his spirit in me, I would know what he was thinking, you know? But God did that for you and me. He put his spirit inside of us so we could know him. We could know his thoughts and we could follow his ways and we could learn him. See, you can read books and all that kind of stuff to know God. You can learn about God. But if you wanna know God personally and intimately, it's time with him in his spirit, letting it flow through your life and letting him teach you and help you to learn. The Holy Spirit guides us in truth, the Bible says, and teaches us how we're supposed to do things. And so we learn that, you know, and, it, uh, and anytime the Holy Spirit touches something, it's always going to line up with the Word of God. Does it make sense? It always lines up. God doesn't con contradict himself. Somebody comes up to you and says, you know, something foolish to you that the Holy Spirit told him. Maybe it's not the Holy Spirit. Maybe it's just a bunch of baloney. Because if it doesn't line up with what God's Word says, then it's not the Holy Spirit. But the Lord works through us and he teaches us how to live our lives, how to do things. You ever, ever uh, thought of something that was smarter than you are? That's the Holy Spirit. Some of you that are in business, you've gotten a God idea. 
or in ministry, you get an idea for an, an event or something that you can do a certain way. That's a God idea. It's the Holy Spirit leading you and directing you and showing you those kinds of things. And so he helps us with that. It's just the Holy Spirit directing our life and teaching us to walk in the steps of God. And I believe Jesus did that. And he, he was led by that spirit like that. And so you and I, the Holy Spirit, helps us with education of understanding God and the heart of God to walk in the footsteps of God. Not only that, the Holy Spirit helps us with communication. He helps us to know what to say in certain circumstances. Jesus said sometimes the Holy Spirit just reminds us of stuff. In John 14, 26, when the, when the Father sends the helper, the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and remind you of everything I've told you. You ever had a situation where you're talking to a friend and they were going through a tough time and all of a sudden a scripture just pops in your mind and you share it with them? Or maybe these last few years you've had a friend going through something, you just felt led to text them a scripture and you text them that scripture and they're like, man, that's exactly what I needed to hear today. That's the Holy Spirit just leading and directing you and telling you what to say. The other day I was praying for a friend of mine that's been a missionary for years and, and he's, he's working in a district role here in our state now and he's just great at relationships and I really felt as I was praying for him that God is using him to tear down the walls that have been built between people and he's the repairer of the breach is the verse in the Bible that kept popping in my mind. The guy that puts the, brings things back together. The older peak ministers and the younger ministers, and I just, man, I just couldn't get away from it. I thought, that may be God telling me that. I don't know. And I felt like I was supposed to text it to him, and I text that to my friend and said, I just feel like the Lord Jesus knew is a repair of the breach, and I appreciate you because you're bringing people back together. And he texted me right back and said, when I went to Ireland, that was the verse God gave me, that he was going to use me to do that. And so I don't say that to brag. I'm just saying sometimes, you know, you just, you just try You feel like the Lord's telling you something. You, you, you follow it. And it's speaking to somebody else and God's working through you to speak to people. Sometimes it's just an example. Jesus said, I don't do nothing unless I've seen the Father do it. And sometimes you're in a situation like, what should I do? And all of a sudden you, you, you think about something that Jesus did. And it just, he reminds us of who Jesus is and what Jesus said to help us to know what to do. You know, when I preach, I use a lot of scripture. You know why? Because it's the best thing I'm gonna say all day. <laughs> it's the word of God and we just trust it. And so we live by it. And sometimes the Lord just gives us words to say. Jesus said in Luke 12, 11, you might be dragged before, the, before the, the judges and stuff. And he says, don't think about what you're gonna say because in that moment, the Spirit of God will tell you what to say. He'll bring those things to remembrance. Isaiah 50, verse four says, the Lord has given me his words of wisdom so that I may know what to say to the weary one. You ever had a friend text you or call you or give you a verse that just spoke life to you, that it encouraged you. That's how the Holy Spirit works. He works through that, telling us what to say. Job, it said about Job in verse four, chapter four, verse four, your words have helped the tottering to stand and strengthen feeble knees. God help us to be more like that. And whenever you say something that's smarter than you, that's probably the Holy Spirit too. You ever been talking to somebody and you said something, you thought, man, I need to go write that down. That was good. <laughs> There's sometimes I'll be preaching and I'll say something coming out of my mouth and I'll think in between services, I'll go back there and I'll add it onto my sermon because that was, that was all right, you know? <laughs> and so that's the Holy Spirit. It's how he works through our lives. So he helps us with communication. Thirdly, the Holy Spirit helps us with inspiration. It's a special or unusual activity or creativity that, that God has a plan for us and the Holy Spirit empowers us and equips us to fulfill that plan. He inspires us. God, the Bible says in Hebrews 13, 20, the God of peace will equip you with everything you need to do his will. Isn't that good? Amen. Brother McGee, the, this was used in a prophetic word a minute ago, Luke chapter 11. It says this, suppose one of you fathers is asked by a son for a fish, you're not going to give him a, a snake. If you're asked for a piece of bread, you're not going to give him a scorpion or a, whatever. He says, if you who are just normal old human people know how to give the right gift to somebody, how much more will the Holy, Holy Spirit or the Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? That was the message we had a minute ago, ask just ask. I want to bless you. I want to help you. Seek me. Come to me. Let me be your source of your help and your strength. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7 and 8 says, See that you're not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
You know what that verse means to me? A couple things. Number one is we're waiting for the revelation of Jesus Christ right now, aren't we? We're waiting for him to come back to this earth and be revealed as the Messiah, the Son of God, and to rapture us out of here and to set this world straight. And while we're waiting on that, Corinthians says we shouldn't be lacking in any spiritual gift. You know what that says to me? That the gifts are still in operation today. That God is still doing his work today and we shouldn't be lacking in any of those gifts. And so we allow the Holy Spirit to equip us to do ministry. He inspires us so we can do ministry with others. In fact, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 says that there are nine gifts of the Spirit and the Holy Spirit gives them out to those that he wills. And so really the word gifts is really not a great word there. The word is manifestations, which means the Holy Spirit comes on you at certain times to do certain kinds of ministry for people. There's three of those gifts that are gifts of communication. They're the gift of tongues, the interpretation of tongues, and, and the gift of prophecy. We've all experienced that in a service where somebody gives a message in tongues and then there's an interpretation of that. And that interpretation is not a word for word translation. In fact, usually the Lord just gives you a thought and then a person says it in the language, however they talk. Some people do King James, thus saith the Lord, I say unto thee, my chickadee, and they go through that whole deal. And then there's other people, they speak in IV, you know. The Lord would have you know, you know. A lot of you have heard the story before. We had a young guy come to our church, and uh, he'd never been in a Pentecostal church. There was a message in tongues and an interpretation. And then, uh, you know, he, he uh, was freaking out and asking his wife what it was, and she tried to explain it all to him. Next week, they came back to church, and there was a prophetic utterance. What you saw a minute ago was a prophetic utterance. There's not a, a message in tongues in front of it. And uh, he heard, I think it was Brother McGee giving it, and he understood it. It was in English. And he turned to look at his wife and said, Honey, I've never been to church before, and, and I'm the guy. I'm the guy. And she's like, what are you talking about? He said, I'm the guy. And she's like, what are you saying? He said, I understand everything he's saying. I think I have the interpretation. <laughs> she said, you idiot, he's talking in English. <laughs> <laughs> but those are gifts of proclamation that the Lord uses in there, there's three gifts of revelation. They're the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and, and the discerning of spirits. One time Paul was preaching and a girl was following around town saying, listen to these men, they speak the words of God. And, and everybody, that sounds like a, something normal and nice, right? But, but it was the wrong spirit. She was demon possessed. And Paul turns around and rebukes the demon out of that woman. He, that's the discerning of spirits, knowing what spirit's operating in a certain situation. A word of wisdom and a word of knowledge are typically God lets you know something you would in no other way know other than through the Holy Spirit, just dropping it in your spirit. Typically a word of wisdom deals with something going on right now or something in the future. The word of knowledge typically deals with something in the past. There's probably been some time you were praying for somebody and you just knew beyond a shout of doubt that they were thinking about divorce or they had been through an abusive situation in their past or you just knew something that was going on in their life and what they were praying for. There might have been times you've been praying for somebody and you, you just felt like you had some, some, some direction for them. And, and I always believe when the Lord uses that, it's always to confirm something you probably already know but the Lord uses that. I, we, we had a kid at college, one of the best examples of it, one year at youth camp, uh, there was a guy sitting on the front row and he was praying, he knew God had called him to go to the ministry and he was trying to decide whether we should go to Evangel or should go to Southwestern. And our evangelist was walking down the aisle and they saw the guy who walked over to him and he said, I just feel like I'm supposed to tell you this, the word Southwestern, and then he walks off. You know, <laughs> It's like, there's no way he'd have known that, he didn't know who the kid was. And there's been times that the Lord gives you directions. I, I, I you know, and you don't, don't make it, some, sometimes we make it way too hard. Like, we're like, you know, I, I think the Lord, you know, I just tell people, listen, I think I'm supposed to tell you this. If it fits, then it fits. If it doesn't, I had too much pizza last night, you know? But don't make it something, something weird. And then there's three gifts of demonstration. They're the gift of miracles, the gift of healing, and the gift of faith. And there's some people that just have a sensitivity in those areas to pray for people to be healed or to believe for miracles. Sometimes a gift of faith, if you've ever been praying for somebody and you just knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that the prayer had been answered. I was, my sister, when I, I was in college, my sister was away from the Lord and she came and visited me in Springfield, Missouri. And when she left, we had talked about the Lord a little bit, she got in her car and she left. And when she left, I felt like the Lord spoke to my heart and I was gonna go pray for her to, to make a commitment to the Lord. And I, I, I walk when I pray because if I don't, I'll fall asleep. And so I, I just started praying for her and I walked across the room one time and I felt like the Lord told me it's done. And so you can stop. And I was like, what? And so, 
an hour later, she got home and she called me and she told me she had recommitted her life to the Lord. And, I, and it was, so it was a gift of faith. I just knew a supernatural knowing that it was done. So the Lord gifts us, the Holy Spirit works with us. We're on his team for inspiration and then finally for motivation. And the motivation, the primary purpose of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit especially, is to witness, to share our faith in Christ with others. Jesus said you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. The disciples went from being scared to death that they were gonna be crucified next to preaching the gospel around the world. You and I are here today because of what happened on the day of Pentecost to those disciples. They took the gospel around the world. Peter stands up that day and preaches on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 people get saved. He, next day they're going to the temple and they, they grab a guy that needs to be healed and his legs instantly get strong and he's healed. And he's dancing around and they get arrested and they pull him in and they tell him, you better quit talking about Jesus. And the Bible says in, in Acts 4, 8, filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter responds to them. I can't stop talking about what's going on. And he shares the gospel with them. And then the whole church gets together in Acts 4.31 and praise, and the place is shaken, and they're all filled with boldness to speak the word of God. And so the Holy Spirit motivates us to share our faith. He gives us strength to lead in the difficult situations. In fact, we have the book of Acts because the disciples acted. In fact, the name of the book really is the Acts of the Apostles. I think it should be changed to the Acts of the Holy Spirit through the Apostles because we're all on his team. He's the star of the show, and so we walk with him. And those guys led a spiritual revolution around the world that still has ripple effects today. And it's not even as much as leading as it's being. The Holy Spirit helps us to be willing to be led, to be led by the Holy Spirit, an awareness of his direction. He quickens our minds. He leads us every day. Paul, when Paul was just first one of their early missionary journeys, they went up through Asia and they, they started to go to the right, which would have been east, and the Holy Spirit said no. So they started to go north up into Bithynia and the Holy Spirit said no. And they didn't know what to do. And that night, Paul had a dream and he saw a man from Macedonia saying, come over here and help us. And they knew that's where the Lord was leading them. So the Holy Spirit was directing their paths. And sometimes it's just a, a simple nudge. You're driving in your car and somebody drops into your spirit and you think, okay, I need to text them. So you pull over and you text because none of us text while we drive. <laughs> or you pick up the phone and you call a friend. Just being led by the Holy Spirit. And over this last two years, we've talked a lot about just text people if you think of them. Call them if you think of them. And I've had so many of you tell me stories of I, I called so-and-so and man, they really needed that right then. Or, or they text, somebody texted me and man, it was exactly what I needed to hear. That's the beauty of being on a team where the Holy Spirit is directing everything for all of us. And I've always learned that if the Holy Spirit's dealing with me about talking to somebody, he's usually dealing with them about listening to it. You know, we've been at restaurants before and you just feel the Holy Spirit. You all know what I'm talking about. Just tell those people I love them. Invite them to church. Buy their meal, you know? Just doing what we feel like the Lord is leading and it, and it works out. It's so cool. I'll, I, I, some of these are old stories, but I remember one night, Tom Green was here at our church and, and he called Andy Green. His son was here at church. And he gave his last, he had some money and we gave an offering that night and Andy was here with his girlfriend, was gonna take her out to eat, and he just felt led to give his money in the offering. And that night after service, Pastor McNabb gave him the exact amount he had just given in the offering and because and, him and his girlfriend weren't gonna go eat dinner after church, right? And then they got to go eat dinner at church. And I remember his dad calling and saying, how cool that is as a dad that God showed your son that because somebody obeyed the Lord and did it. So it's just little, little things of being led by the Holy Spirit. If he's working on us, he's working on them. And we all know there's times we just feel a burden and we don't know what we're praying for. Aren't you glad that the Holy Spirit intercedes for the saints, as Romans 8 says, with inexpressible groanings and he searches our hearts. And literally the Holy Spirit prays through us as we intercede and we pray for other people. To as many as are being led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. There's a lot of things in the Bible that say they're proofs that you're a Christian. One of them is that you are led by the Holy Spirit in your life. And so, 
I've been chewing on this all week. Zechariah 4, 6 says, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by my spirit. We're on the Holy Spirit's team. And he's the one that, that directs everything. We just gotta get out of the way and let him do his thing. You know, I, as I get older, I, I, we tease, I tease with Brandon Groves all the time that if they ever declare me incompetent, let's go have a hunting accident, all right? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I run around with a group of people that are struggling through some of that about parents and should they have the power of attorney or what, you know, do you need to intervene in their lives? And we're all scared to death of being declared incompetent. Well, I got good news for you today. We're all incompetent when it comes to the things of God. This verse messed me up this week, 2 Corinthians 3, 5 through 6. Not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. He made us competent as ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. You and I today are competent because the Holy Spirit lives in us and works through us and ministers to people through us. Bill Johnson said, God forbid that anybody would ever come to me to pray for them and all they get is me. I don't want people to see me. When I pray for people, I don't want it to be me, I want it to be Jesus. Why? Because I can't change anybody's life, I can't save anybody, I can't heal anybody because it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit. And if all our church has is good music and comfortable pews and a nice environment and all that good stuff, we're just another place to go meet. But if God shows up and people experience God when they walk into this place, that's what it's all about. And that's what the day of Pentecost is all about. So would you stand tonight or this morning? And I just want to say, let's just have more of God. Amen. If you're here in this room today and maybe the Lord pricked at your heart as I was preaching and you know there's some stuff in your life that's not quite right and you need to get right with God. Maybe you're a Christian, but there's just some areas where the Lord's been dealing with you for a long time, and it's time for you to let go of those things and, and move. And Matt begins to sing in a minute. I want to ask you to come to this altar and lay it down because, listen, you got to get rid of us so there can be more room for God. Amen? It's about me decreasing, us decreasing, so that he can increase in our lives. If you're here in this room and you just say, Robbie, I want, to be, I want more of the Holy Spirit. I want more of him working in my life. Then you come around these altars and pray and just ask the Lord today, help get rid of me. I need more of you. I need your Holy Spirit filling me up. If you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, then let us pray for you today. If you need a healing in your body or you just need God to touch you and you just want to go after him and seek him as the prophetic word said a minute ago, then I want to encourage you to come. And we're just going to pray for a little while and Doug will close out the service. But would you come as Matt begins to sing? Come on, you just say today, I want more of him. I need more of him in my life would you come and let's pray today we bless you Jesus bless you Jesus come on would you come if you got a need come let's pray bless your name bless your name what a great Sunday we had some awesome worship and a powerful message from Pastor Rob. If you would like to respond to Pastor Rob's message, right now is the time to do so. Just because you're not here in the church doesn't mean that you can't respond to Pastor Rob's message. Our online host is ready to meet you right now wherever you are. Go ahead and reach out in the comments section and we'll be glad to pray with you. Or you can go to prayer.wearethebridge.church and there you'll see a short form that goes directly to myself and I would love to pray with you. Today, if you experience life change by giving your life to Christ or rededicating your life to Christ, we want to celebrate with you. Go ahead and reach out to our online hosts, and we have resources for you. We want to take some short time right now to give you, our church online family, time to respond, and we're going to do that right now. If you want prayer, if you gave your life to Christ or rededicated your life to Christ, let us know right now so we can help you take your next steps or pray with you. We love you, Church Online family. We hope that you took advantage of those online links and prayed with our online host. 
If you're able to join us here locally on our Mustang campus, we would love to have you. Go to joinme4.church. There's the option to plan a visit. All this is, it takes out any stress of planning your first visit here at the bridge so we can make sure that your first experience is your best experience and we can answer any questions that you may have. We're so thankful that you chose to spend part of your weekend here with us. We hope to see you guys next week.